Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, the discussion is focused on innovating in the digital age, uh, focusing on empowering women in tech, honoring Women's History Month. I'm very excited to have my good friend uh, with us, Shadi, a woman leader uh, who's been working with biggest global brands. Thanks, Shadi, for accepting our invite. Of course. Happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. Um, and then for those of you who, um, the first time that you join our webinar series and um, are not familiar with myself or Dessir, my name is Caroline Rafi. I'm a VP of Enterprise with Dessir Global Business School. Uh, Dessir designs and delivers the world's most industry applied university degrees that is focused on advancing students' careers. Um, our mission is to cover overcome barriers and biggest barriers are usually time and cost. And we are very creative in helping our students overcoming those barriers. I'm very excited and proud to announce that uh, we launched our uh, women in uh, women in leadership network page this month, again, honoring Women's History Month. And we did that to better support and show our commitment in supporting women in achieving their career goals, closing the gender gap and help breaking the barriers to leadership opportunities for women. So very excited about it. I'm gonna put the um, uh, webpage, web address in the chat and you know, feel free to uh, please visit the website. And then if you know anybody that can take advantage of it, please send us, uh, send them our way. With that said, um, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to, Shadi, read your bio because I don't want to miss out anything. Obviously, it's a very impressive background. Uh, so I'm going to read uh, rather than just saying it because I don't want to miss anything. Um, Shadi Nair is head of community at TikTok, where she oversees diverse creator communities and leads education programs that empower creators to thrive on TikTok. In her years building TikTok's creator community, and education teams, Shadi's worked with creators during Fashion Week, Heritage Month, and major cultural moments like the Grammys and Super Bowl. Her team has um, her team has powered growth for thousands of creators, helping them build careers and navigate their creation journey on TikTok. Shadi has been working with creators since her days at Twitch, where she led marketing for creators and developer communities. Outside of work, she has a passion for supporting women in tech, the development of women globally through her work in tech women program and supporting underrepresented communities. Amazing. I love that. That last part is my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm happy to share more about it. Amazing. Okay, so let's just get into it. Um, let's start with, tell us about your background. What got you interested in working in technology? And then um, more into, as a woman leader, how have you been navigating challenges and opportunities in your career within your industry? Yeah, uh, I'll start with my background. I mean, I, you know, I was born and raised in the Bay Area. So starting... At the beginning, uh, I've been kind of immersed in tech forever. My parents were in the tech industry, so it was kind of hard to get away from it. Um, and I tried. <laughs> I tried to look at other, uh, you know, ways of kind of getting out of the bay, getting out of tech. I, I looked at finance. I looked at other things and, you know, uh, a series of events and times of, you know, graduating and, and things kind of happening in the world kind of led me back to the Bay Area and led me into the tech industry. And you kind of just fall into it being from there and having that network. Um, so I fell into it and I slowly kind of built my career through working at various startups, um, various kind of very tech centric companies very engineer heavy and kind of developed uh, a career as one of the only girls and one of the only women in the room very early on um, and and was lucky enough to land in places that had leaders that were willing to kind of let me grow and empower me and teach me the ropes as kind of a young grasshopper kind of getting an early start um, and I landed at you know Twitch, which which really kind of uh, helped me settle into this world of 
tech and media and creators, which I love and uh, clearly have a passion for and have continued to kind of uh, move in that direction. Um, and, and I'll say, you know, kind of the second part of your question, you know, as a woman leader, you know, the challenges, the opportunities that I've had, a lot of that has been, uh, I'll start with the opportunities. A lot of that has been created by the people that I've worked with, um, and the network that I've had and the network that I've built throughout my years. Um, and I've been very lucky to have, you know, both male and female leaders that have empowered me and that have given me kind of the guidance and the mentorship and the opportunity to grow. And that's one thing, you know, I'll probably touch on throughout this conversation is how important it is to kind of uh, wrap yourself up with people that will guide you and support you and open those doors for you. Because yes, while you know, your skill set and your work ethic and everything that you do has a lot to do with your success. It's also about the people that are around you and the people that are opening the doors for you. So, um, you know, and, and I've had both sides of the coin, I think, as a lot of people have had, but I've, you know, also had a uh, very uplifting and supportive mentors and people who've let me kind of have a voice in the room, even kind of early on in my career. Um, and I think, you know, one of the biggest challenges for me has been really kind of learning how to navigate the internal corporate world. I think, you know, that was something that uh, I'm an, I, my parents are immigrants. I was born here in the U.S., but it's not something that you're taught. It's not something that comes as naturally as like, as I see with my colleagues who have, you know, generations here in the States. Uh, so, you know, navigating that kind of corporate function, navigating the internal politics, all of that is something that I, you can really only learn in two ways from experience and from somebody giving you that guidance. So again, like leaning on that mentorship uh, is so, so important and kind of uh, being able to find your path in, in tech or any, um, uh, industry really. Thank you. And I love what you said that, you know, women and men, cause we always talk about, you know, women empowering women, women, you know, like supporting each other. But to your point, I always say that it's that yes, but also the importance of men who support and empower women. So I'm, thank you for saying that. Cause that, that's a huge part of it. Um, and then in continuous that, cause you're talking about, you know, mentors and, you know, being in it. So specifically focusing on your industry and technology, technology changes so fast. It's not, if it used to be, you know, this month or it's, it's not even daily, it's like by the minute now, <laughs> how do you keep up with the trends and how do you make sure that you, continue being on top of things and drive innovation and staying relevant i mean with tiktok obviously <laughs> just kidding <laughs> you have uh, to. but but really i mean it's it's i think you know what has really helped me stay up to date with the trends and to grow especially in the last couple of years as the world has changed so quickly is surrounding myself with smart young people. A lot of my team and the people that I work with at TikTok are very young. I work with a lot of Gen Z and you'd be surprised how important that is. Like our youth, our younger generation, they are on the edge of everything. They have the most juice. They have the most energy. They are kind of the most thirsty to learn. And because of that, they will challenge you and they will guide you in a direction to actually have to keep up with them and to have to learn. So um, I've gotten a lot of uh, a lot of growth just around like industry knowledge, obviously like pop culture and other things um, <laughs> through my very young team um, and surprisingly have, have learned a lot and really been kept on my toes. Uh, I also love a good podcast. I think, you know, I, I start my mornings with the Wall Street Journal. I always listen to kind of the A16Z 
podcasts, reply all, these are all great ways to kind of just stay informed, see what's going on, see what's top of mind for people and what people are talking about. Um, and, you know, I know I made a joke, but I really do learn a lot on TikTok. Um, it's surprising how much information there is on there from personal finance to tech to salary negotiations to politics. You can you can find anything. Um, and I, I spend a lot of time, not surprisingly, on TikTok. Um, and, and these days I'm like on a deep dive of the royal family. So uh, <laughs> learning a lot about Kate Middleton and, and why she's not coming out of hiding. <laughs> but it's funny you said that because when you, um, you know, when what my generation, you know, when you think about TikTok, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, that like maybe maybe cooking tips, maybe, I don't know, yeah, the royal family, you know, more like entertainment, if you will. But then, you know, now talking with you, it's like, and that's one of the questions that I'm going to ask, um, you know, towards the end is that when, when you think about TikTok, it's different. I feel like it has its own category, different than LinkedIn. But what you're saying is you can actually, you know, get different type of information and it's not just one-sided. We'll get into that um, towards the end of the conversation. So, um, this question is kind of not, I don't want to say generic, but I'm sure it, it kind of is, but I'm sure at the same time, it's on everybody's mind. So you work with different generations, as you said, you know, mostly Gen Z's. Um, so you're working for one of the biggest global brands. What advice do you have for professionals, uh, whether they're, you know, older, younger, they're students, um, maybe women specifically who want to break into the industry because, um, you know, ageism, you know, we, we talk about, you know, oh, don't, you have to be, um, it doesn't matter if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're, you know, what age, but does it really, like, what advice do you have? Yeah. I mean, I would, I would split it into kind of three, three tips. I would say build a network understand the industry that you want to be be in and and by understand I mean really understand it um and develop the skills for the role that you're looking for and the role that you want so um you know when it comes to like thinking outside of just your core job functions there are skills that you need if you want to be a leader in that industry there are uh, skills that you need for a certain role. It's like applying to a school or a university. A lot of people check all of the boxes, but what do you have? What specific skill set do you have that sets you apart from just those checked boxes? You might be able to say, I hit all of these points on this job description, but what is the thing that is going to kind of make you shine? Um, and then, you know, networking. I think is so important these days, it's almost impossible to get a job just by applying online. Yeah. Um, it's really, really important to kind of have a network, have a strong network that's willing to refer you, willing to go to bat for you and going to them and finding like different pathways into your industry outside of just, you know, the days of showing up with a resume at the front door of an office are gone and the days of applying via LinkedIn, uh, I think are gone as well. It's really about kind of who you know and how you can get in the door and who you can get to vouch for you. So, um, and it's not just about looking at your, you know, LinkedIn profile and reaching out to your network. You need to nurture and build those relationships because these days so many people have so many connections you know, I get people that reach out to me constantly kind of like, Hey, will you refer me? And, you know, sometimes I will. And, and, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about that too, but a lot of times I'm not going to go to bat for you unless we've had a relationship or somebody else has vouched for you, or I know a little bit more about you. So it's really important to kind of always be building that community for yourself so that when you are switching jobs or when you're looking for a new job or when you're trying to change industries, you have some backbone to lean on and people will kind of support you and uplift you and kind of build you up 
for that potential position. Um, and then I said, understanding the industry, that is, it's not just about knowing tech or knowing media or knowing, you know, financial institutions. It's about deep diving uh, at that, at the company level and being really, really strong on what it is that their goals are, what it is that they do, because once you do get into the door, you still have to prove yourself. And, you know, a lot of hiring managers and people are looking for that extra skill set, not just the check boxes. Thank you. And I, I, um, cause I follow you, obviously I see your interaction with your team and I see how much they adore you. And it's like, show did they show that? So you don't, you're not just, you know, saying that I see that you live that, um, and it's actually really inspiring. So to, to, in continue to what you're saying, um, are there specific characteristics that your industry values within their own employees, or if they're hiring for a new role, um, uh, would you say there is the one, there's the, the most important thing, uh, that you can point out that will help an individual break in to, uh, to your world? Yeah, I mean, I can, I can give you more than one, um, because I can't, I can't uh, tone it down to just one. But also, it depends, you know, it depends on the industry you're looking at, it depends on the type of job you want. But generally speaking, I think some of the important things uh, that I look for are, you know, someone that has the ability to manage up, um, I think that's something that, you know, at TikTok and, and in tech in general goes a long way. Uh, making your manager's job easier is a skill uh, and it's an important one. Um, I think, you know, in my industry, especially public speaking, relationship building, going back to kind of that networking, networking outside is one part. But networking inside and in your company is another part. And being able to do that, being able to find value in your work, share that value and get buy-in is a very important skill set in tech because no matter which part you're on, if you're a, a product manager or a marketer or a, a content person or an engineer, you need to get buy-in at some point in the funnel internally to move your project along. And especially in tech, that's really, really important. Um, if you can't build those relationships, no one, and it is kind of like a back scratchy type of relationship. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. And, you know, you have to be able to build that relationship so that people are willing to scratch your back for you. So, um, you know, and part of that is not just that relationship building, but, you know, really elevating your work and elevating the things that you do internally, both to kind of manage up and build that relationship with your manager and their manager and for them to be able to show off their team's work, um, but also for you to be able to show your impact so that people are more excited to kind of tag, tag along with your projects and your work. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think that's in any, really any industry, because we used to write in our resumes, you know, works great with cross-functional teams. And now it's like, well, that just, that just, yeah, of course, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I would also add that like communication skills are really important, you know, being able to across any team, um, being able to kind of get your point across and and build that relationship and communicating is a big piece of that. Thank you. So next question is, um, so we do a lot of, especially at Ducer, and that's, again, I share that passion with you, you know, helping um, women or minority groups, you know, with uh, within leadership and, and diff with across different industries. So, um, but we're having a conversation um, in one of the um, events that we had that 70% of plus, 70% plus of HR professionals are women. 75% um, of school teachers are women. So there are industries that are women or female dominated. But then when you look at, um, for example, 
chief technology officers, there are less than 10% uh, of chief technology officers are women. So then it makes you think, how can women have a bigger role in shaping the future of technology and tech companies? Or what roles do you envision for women leaders in making the future of innovation within specifically within tech industry or maybe industries that are more male dominated? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, here's the thing. I think it's growing slowly um, and a lot more women are coming into those kind of STEM related roles and leaning into that. And um, an organization that I work with um, that's funded by the U S state department called Tech Women, which you uh, shouted out in my bio, uh, is a really good example of a way to kind of funnel women into more tech male-dominated roles. Um, what Tech Women does is they support and empower women emerging leaders in developing countries that are far, far more successful and smart than I could ever be. Um, but they don't have the opportunities that we have here in the United States. And so we kind of give that opportunity to these women from around the globe, bring them to the Bay Area, I think to DC, Los Angeles, they're, they're kind of spreading now across the US um, and put them into tech companies uh, as interns for a short period of time, interns that like, by the way, are teaching us things because they are so incredible. They are incredible women leaders. They have awards. They are CEOs of companies, um, but they're in developing countries that just don't have the same access. And you see those women really grow and thrive and go back to their countries and build and develop those industries for themselves and for other women. And so we're spreading it outside of the US, which is amazing. And a lot of those women come back and, you know, get jobs at some of the tech companies that they um, get mentorship from. So, you know, part of that is, is really about how do we as men and women build each other up and focus on kind of developing the women in our lives and the girls in our lives and mentorship is a really valuable part of that. Um, you know, either through programs like this or individually, I, you know, I consider myself a mentor for my very young and aspiring team. And, and I, you know, really take pride in their growth and I take pride in developing them. And sometimes, you know, I think, you can get bogged down in the day-to-day -day life. And I forget how important my voice is and how important my time is. And saving space for yourself, obviously, is very important, but also building space for you know, people who are actively looking at you for a hand, um, I think is immensely important. And I think, you know, there are opportunities for you to kind of uh, open up your door to people that maybe aren't in your direct line or aren't in your network and kind of build them up if you see potential in them. And, you know, growth, growth for a person, growth for me, growth for you, um, growth for any of the folks listening on this call uh, is not just about kind of reaching up and climbing the ladder and you know, that's important and, and you should definitely do that and you should advocate for yourself. But it's about kind of looking back uh, down that ladder and seeing how you can reach down and pull someone up behind you. So, you know, for every strong, amazing, empowered woman leader, there has been someone that has reached down behind them on that ladder and and lifted them up and helped them up a step. Um, and I think it's it's on us as leaders, it's on us as women, it's on us as men to do that for, you know, the women that are thirsting for it and asking for it and, you know, raising their hand and sending you cold messages on LinkedIn and other places to, you know, be supported. I love that. And it's so genuine. I feel like, um, like what you're saying, it really sits 
And it really like I was getting goosebumps because it's so rewarding because to your point, yes, you want to have safe space for yourself. You want to go up the ladder. You want to grow. But I feel like part of your individual growth is when you see that you can make a difference in someone else's life and someone else's career. And when you see that, it's like a flower that blooms and you feel like you were a part of that. So it's also maybe selfishly, but it's rewarding. Yeah. yeah, you know, but you're and like the selfish piece of that is now you have a network of people that you've developed that will lift you up too when you yeah. need it. And and you're, you know, we're not always gonna be on top and we're not always gonna be thriving. There will be bumps in the road and there will be things that will change. And if you've kind of built your surroundings and your network and your people that you've let flourish they will also lift you up when you're you know when you need it yes no I completely agree with you I completely agree but do you think that there's I know we're getting there I know we're going there I know there are all these now you know um groups and you know whatnot is happening but do you think that there is enough being done for women to get to leadership roles um or what more like in your dream and what more do you think you should be doing or we can be doing to expedite that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I see it in the tech industry. It's a conversation every day that, you know, we have to be thinking about diversity. We have to be thinking about kind of ensuring that we open up the doors for women, especially in like certain types of jobs. Um, I think it's important to have the right person for the job, no matter who it is. I don't think you should ever sacrifice that, but I do think it's important that we remember and know that we have to open the door for people who don't necessarily usually get the opportunity to interview and be in those rooms and be part of those conversations. Um, so I think we have to have the mindset as, as leaders and hiring managers that, you know, the more we can create those opportunities, the more we can open those doors, the easier it will become. And the more we will have, it's, it's not for lack of women that can do the job. It's the, the opportunities and the doors that have not yet been open that people in the industry have to open for them. And we have to remember that. Um, and, and I think that's the key piece here that, you know, you will get the resumes, you will get the, you know, influx, but sometimes they're not coming in because women don't have the confidence to, they say, you know, one of the things that I've heard in, in kind of recruitment overall is, you know, a, a man is much far more likely to apply for a role that he may not be qualified for that a woman is not. They will look at the job description and be like, oh, you know, I have five out of seven of these things. I'm not going to apply. Whereas a man will be like, I have five out of seven. I'm going to apply and, you know, whatever, we'll see. And so changing that mindset, educating women, mentorship, all of that is really important. But also on the other side, knowing that those women may not be applying actively going and opening that door for them and searching for them is, is an important piece. One of the things that I love about these webinars that we host is there are certain things that being repeated in regardless of what the topic is and what you pointed out is one of those that is imposter syndrome for women is like, we had a webinar specifically focusing on that. It's that um, it's, I guess that's that's how we're just wired. You know, it has to be perfect. And then if it's perfect, maybe I don't have like, I have students that have three degrees and they're still like, it's not good enough. You know, now I've got to go get my, you know, it's so I I definitely, I want to echo that. And thank you for um, mentioning that because that is something that needs to be addressed more and more for women to be aware of and to take that step and feel confident that you are good enough, you know, and you can't. Um, you, you should be there. You belong there. 
Absolutely. Um, but then there's another piece of it that's especially talking about because we're also at the server huge you know, when it comes to DEI. Um, you don't want to be like, okay, so I have a resume that's a woman and a man, or you know, so we don't have enough women, let's hire, you know, you wanna you want to be mindful and you want to get the right people for the job, right? So how does, again, I'm going to focus on your industry specifically, go about finding and keeping talent to make sure that it is diverse and inclusive, you know, team uh, that brings innovation and creativity? I've been very lucky that uh, TikTok values uh diversity in hiring and that our recruiting teams are very focused on that and also very focused on the guidance of their hiring managers. Um, you know, I think when it comes to retaining talent, it's it's about excitement, the brand, the compensation. Um, obviously that's a, a big selling point and, and also, you know, the value that a company brings. And I think a lot of people really believe in the mission, um, at TikTok specifically, I think in tech, obviously, you know, in general, folks love the kind of growth opportunities, the fast paced environment. So that's, you know, a way to kind of ensure that your talent remains. Um, but to your point, I I do think it's important to have the right person for the job. Um, and that's why I, you know, I pointed that out and I made it very clear that we have to open the door so that we can get the right people in with that kind of diversity mindset. Um, and ensure that it's not, we're not making exceptions for diversity, but we're being diverse because yeah. diversity is the best. Thank you for that. Um, so talk about networking, connecting, you know, creating opportunities. Um, we all, well, I shouldn't say all, most of us are on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, when it comes to education, professional life is known to be the platform. And I'm going to give a shout out to Corey Welsh because she's also uh, one of those women that empowers and, um, you know, we love working with her that represents, you know, LinkedIn. Um, so talking about TikTok and other platforms, how can we leverage their, those platforms or are there, are they the right platforms for professionals to network, connect, um, create opportunities for uh, collaboration and growth within the professional circle? Because I know I personally use a bit of, you know, Instagram here and there for my professional, but I'm mostly focused on LinkedIn. But what is your, how do you? Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think LinkedIn is a great tool and you should definitely leverage it. Um, you know, I've seen LinkedIn also just growing to be a little bit more of a social tool as well. As well. A lot of my network um, has started posting more and more over the years and like really sharing more on LinkedIn. So I think, you know, obviously that is for professional kind of connection and networking a very important tool that everybody should, you know, leverage and use. Um, and I think TikTok's amazing. I think, you know, TikTok offers something that no other platform offers and that's reach. So if you want a question answered, if you're trying to find a group of people to do X in a very niche kind of topic, TikTok is the place to kind of post and do it. Um, but I also want to caveat that with TikTok is not necessarily a social network. TikTok is a, you know, media company. And a lot of the way that people share is entertainment, um, entertainment type content. However, that entertainment type content can be geared towards any industry. So you know, if you have a business or something that you are trying to stand up, if you are an accountant and are trying to get clients posting about, you know, general accounting tips on TikTok could 
get your reach so much further than any other platform. And it's so funny because it's so niche and there you will find a community of people that are obsessed with learning accounting tips and just like follow you and grow. And as long as obviously you are dynamic and interesting, uh, that can really kind of be a great tool to either build your business or build your network or, you know, get questions answered or just kind of start kind of making a community on a platform that will eventually kind of be a jumping off point for, you know, other platforms or for LinkedIn and driving people to kind of something that you are trying to navigate through in the professional space on LinkedIn. Um, so, you know, I think any platform is important to leverage. I, I would say, you know, you don't have to choose one um, and you should find ways to kind of activate on each one and, and each one should be different. You wouldn't post something on LinkedIn that you post on Instagram and you wouldn't do something on Instagram that you would post on TikTok. Each one has its own value, its own consumer base um, and its own type of kind of content. Uh, and, you know, being in this industry, I might be biased, but I would lean into all of them because this is our future and this is the way that people are going to interact with one another. Um, and it's a really, really good way to kind of scale out you, personality, your voice, your business, whatever it is that you are trying to kind of put out there into the world, you can do it on, on one or all of these. And obviously, you know, whether I worked at TikTok or not, I would give this advice. If you want to scale anything out, if you want to grow anything, TikTok is a place to do it. It really is. Thank you. And yeah, I think um, a part of it is you don't know if you don't go. So like giving it a try and to see what's going to work for your purposes, your goals and not being scared. Cause sometimes I'm like, uh, I don't know if it's me or are we going to break it? Or, you know, what am I going to put out in the world that I don't. So yeah, just being, um, being brave and just giving it a try. Cause you don't know unless yeah. um, you've tried it. So any, any question that you think that I missed that I should have asked or any last advice or pointers that you want to share with us? Um, let's think. Last advice or pointers, honestly, for me would be lean in to your people, understand what it is that you really want and go and ask for it. Um, it took me a long time to kind of really know what it is that I'm good at and what it is that I want to do with my life. And, you know, I'm still answering that question, but even just thinking like six months in advance, like if you don't know what your five to 10 year plan is, that's okay. You know, make it into smaller increments and, and make that decision, like do it week by week, if that's easier for you, but find something that you want to achieve in a time period that makes sense for you and ask for help from people that it makes sense. I, I, th I think we don't do this enough. I think women especially don't do this enough. Finding people that can help you, finding yeah. people that can reach down and lift you up is so important. And you don't have to do it on your own. Um, and there a are a lot of weakness. Of Sorry? It's not a sign of weakness. Not at all. Actually, it's a sign of strength and it's a sign of being very smart. Um, it's something I really value when I see somebody who's willing to say like, Hey, you know, I'm not sure how to do this. And this is what I'm trying to achieve. Can you help me? Can you give me some guidance? Can you kind of stand in place for me and lift me up? And so, you know, I think if we remember that and we remember that, you know, everybody's kind of in the same boat and not everybody knows everything and we're all learning every day and we're all growing every day. Then, you know, you, it's kind of like, you know, when you do a speech and you look at everybody in their underwear, everybody's walking around in their underwear and we are all just naked people that are confused and don't know what we're doing. So help each other out and <laughs> support one another and 
support the women who are, you know, taking strides and changing the world for the girls who are to come and, you know, in the years to come. So. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Shadi. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I know we went over, but I think like everything that you shared with us is so valuable and so genuine. Um, and I, I really, really enjoyed this. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. I also want to thank, I should have introduced our marketing team, Bill and Maria, sorry. Um, thank you for your support, guys. I don't know if we have any questions from um, our attendees that you guys want to share. Again, I know we went over, but. Yeah, so Q&A is open, everyone, so you can ask questions. Um, but Shadi, I have a question. Just um, okay. interested in the tech world. You know, we talk about all the kind of skills you need in the tech space and obviously engineering, the people that code the app are always very important in the company like that. How does someone break through? Like when you look at the tech industry, it's very, it seems very siloed. You know, you have your engineers, you know people that can get you into the tech, into meta, TikTok, any of these big players. But for all the people that were to do like, like an MBA with us and like look for a new career path, how does someone break into tech with that imposter syndrome as well like you need that coding background that you need that those skill levels especially for like a good paying role in those positions but um what would your advice be to break through into that tech world for anyone that is looking to shift their career from you know finance to you know tech for instance yeah yeah I, first of all you don't need to be an engineer i am i am far from a tech person <laughs> at all um, and I worked with developers and I, you know, had to kind of up level my skills a little bit and like learn the ropes and understand some of these crazy coding terms. And so you, you know, you learn and you grow and you study and you kind of figure that out. But going back to kind of an earlier point that I made, understand your industry. If you want to work at Google, know what Google does in every facet of what they do, whether it's Google X or search or whatever, you don't know, need to know how to code, you know, the search bar, but you do need to understand kind of how the backbone of Google works. So, you know, study, do your research. It's, it's not going to kind of just like come easily to you as a non-tech person, but you have to understand the industry that you want to be in. Um, and when I was working in kind of the developer space pre-Twitch, it was very tech heavy and I had to, you know, learn about things that I had no clue. Like I just did not understand the terms. I did not speak the same language as my audience and I was marketing to them. Um, and you just kind of have to learn it and, and pick it up and build that skill set. So uh, I think it's really important not to just say, you know, I don't know tech, so I can't work in tech. That's that's not the case. There's a lot of non-technical people in the tech industry, but they understand it. And so like building that baseline understanding is going to be important. Absolutely. And I have another follow-up question, a marketing question. So we have some marketing students on the webinar. Um, thanks, Juan Carlos, for having some of your students join the webinar. Um from a marketing perspective, obviously we look at these social media channels uh, for leads and things like that, as do Sir does any company. Um, TikTok seems to have such a high value in impressions and likes. I mean, people can post a video on TikTok and become famous in like one week. I like my professor from my university that I went to became an influencer within like two weeks, right? In, and you do that on Instagram, forget about it. Even if you use Reels. So like monetize anything like that what is like the if you can share what's like the secret from a marketer's perspective of how can someone become so viral on tiktok still using the same formula from a consumer standpoint with hashtags you know the for you page all these kind of things that get you up top you can do that on instagram but you don't see the same like sense of community that just drives influences up to stardom so fast and i was just curious from a marketing standpoint how that works on the back end. Well, <laughs> we can't reveal those secrets, but <laughs> I can I can share um, you know, the way that TikTok works is is really about community, you said it. Um, so there is a community and there is a niche for everything and anything that you can think of. Like think of anything when you get off of this call and put it in the search bar and there will be a billion videos 
about that specific thing and you can go down, you know, whatever rabbit hole you want. And a lot of it is educational. You can learn a ton. What I say to people that ask me this question, what works best on TikTok truly is authenticity. That's what sets it apart from any other platform. It's not curated. If if you've seen, um, there was a a girl who went viral last week for posting a 50 part, 10 minutes each series about who the F did I marry about her experience marrying this man during COVID and what happened to her and what she found out about this person. No glam, no camera, no lighting. She's sitting in her car and she's just telling a story and she's a very good storyteller. She's a great communicator and she's so authentic and she's just picks up her camera and posted 50, 10 minute parts. That's so much content. And each one has gotten over a million views. And it just shows that if you have a story to tell, if you have something to share, if you can be authentic and you can build that authenticity into your content, it will find its way through the algorithm because people will engage with it. And that's really how TikTok works. And having said that, sometimes it takes time on TikTok. So I encourage people to keep their content up for at least 90 days, because that's generally how long it takes to kind of make its way through. So if you see it, it's not hitting, don't delete it, don't take it down, let it sit there. It will make its way through and you'll see it kind of, if it's, if it's good content, it will, it will start to kind of build up. And it's a, a lot of it is about testing. Uh, the creators that we work with, a lot of them said, you know, when I first started, I posted a video, it didn't do well, and I just kept posting. One of them hit, and that was my formula. And then you basically take that formula and you repeat it because you know what works now, you know what your audience likes. Um, last night when I couldn't sleep, I was <laughs> scrolling TikTok and I saw a girl who her dad was visiting her in her New York studio and she gave like a studio tour. Everybody in the comments commented on how big her closet was. And one of the main comments was you should put your bed in the closet so your studio can be a one bedroom. And she responded to the comment. She did it. Both videos went viral. And now she's building off of that. And she's asking questions. What should I do next to this apartment? People are commenting and she's doing that step by step. They're like, add this, do that. And she's kind of changing uh, her home based on comments. And each video is doing better than the next one because she found her formula. So it's really about kind of testing the waters. And, and I looked at her account. She had a bunch of posts before that didn't do well. And this one did. And now she's leveraging that. Fantastic. I live, you know, in Connecticut, close to New York City. I might need to get on TikTok to get advice on all these types of things with apartments because yeah. it's <laughs> crazy here. Um, appreciate that. And I think just one last question. This is my last one, I promise. Just a quick one um, from a, another marketing question for the marketing students on the call and everything like that. In your opinion, obviously TikTok, I think, will be an answer here. What are the, who are the top three major players in the social media space now? Um obviously asking questions because like X with the purchase from Elon Musk, um, things got a little messy there. So who are the top three players in your opinion in the social media space? Hard one to answer <laughs> for me. I, I think TikTok is one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Wow. One, two, Fantastic. Three. Yeah. That's a great answer. <laughs> I think. Love it. Um, that's it for me. It depends what you want to do, but I, I really do think, you know, uh, TikTok is kind of the the underdog right now. And a lot of people, especially in our age group and, and older, outside of my mom, who's obsessed with TikTok, um, don't understand the value and are underutilizing what they can do on the platform. So I think it's one to watch and it's one to be focused on if you're building a business, if you're trying to build a presence, or even if you're just trying to understand your audience and do something off platform, but, you know, doing the research on TikTok is going to be really valuable. Fantastic. Great. I know we've uh, went over a little bit, but thanks everyone for staying on. Um, 
I think this is a good place to stop. Obviously, we'll send the recording to everyone that's registered, everyone that's um, uh, that attended live. Uh, Caroline, thanks so much for moderating. Shadi, thanks so much for being on. Uh, it was great to get your insights. Um, obviously, Maria, thanks for all the help uh, putting this on. Um, but I think it's a good place to end and just appreciate everyone uh, taking the time to be on this webinar and uh, give, providing value to our students um, with insights and things from TikTok. So appreciate it. And thanks, everyone. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. Nice Thank to be you. here. Thanks. Bye. Bye.